Tina. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really cute, really easy little wire bangles. Now let me show you this one. You have to squeeze it and lift it up for it to come off. And they open and close pretty well. They maintain their um, shape pretty nicely. And I'm just using 20 gauge wire. So I'm going to show you a few of what I made. So you can see that you can do a bunch of different things with them. This one, I use 6 millimeter cubes. It seems to work best when you stay with a bead that's 6 millimeter and under. This is a 6x8 rondelle. It works, but um, it just works better. My measurements and everything work better with a bead that's 6 millimeter and under. But this works okay, and I think it's because of the shape of the rondelles. This is also an 8x6 rondelle, and it is in silver wire. I'm using brass and silver. This one I did in kind of a pink color wire. And the wire is important, and we'll discuss that. I did this one, and then I did kind of an asymmetrical looking one like this. And they're all really cute on the wrist. They're really easy to take on and off, and they're fairly easy to make. Let me show you what it takes to make these particular bracelets. Now, I have been using, this one is working the best for me. This is artistic wire, 20 gauge, and it is brass. And I think because of the brass, it's just a little bit harder. You need a little bit harder um, wire for this. So you don't want to use an aluminum or something dead soft. This needs to be more of a medium temper. So this artistic brass wire works really, really well. And I believe I bought this at Michael's. It was a great big package. And um, I think it was 20 bucks, something like that. I don't remember, but it's a lot of wire and I've used it for a long time. Or you can use Beadalon 20 gauge and you want the German style wire. German style wire works really good because it's medium temper and it's just a little bit harder than this artistic wire, but it works really nicely. I tried this pink wire on this one and you can see it doesn't hold its shape quite nice enough, but I'm not really sure. I think this is artistic wire also, and though it isn't dead soft, it isn't as hard as the others. So you want to try what you have on hand, that's fine, but if you have a really soft, soft, dead soft wire, it's not going to work very well. It's just going to squish up. And you want this to hold its shape because, like I said, you can open it and close it, and it pretty much retains its shape, and that's what you want. So you're going to need some 20 gauge wire, keeping in mind what we just discussed. And then you're going to need some beetle on crimp tubes. Now if you have round crimp tubes, size 1, that is the easiest. I'm using size 1 for some of them because it, all I have is gold size 1 and they're round and that works really easy because all you have to do is squeeze it with your chain nose pliers. However, if all you have on hand is um, size 2 crimp beads, I just spilled these, um, tubes instead of round, and it's a size 2, you can use this also, but you will have to have your regular size crimping tool to do that. Otherwise, it will not work. So you can have this, or you can have this, or both. I'm going to show you how to use both today. And then you're going to need some beads, of course. So um, I'm going to use, this time, some 6 millimeter bicones. I haven't done that yet. I've used rondelles. I used cubes. This one is cubes. I think the cubes turned out the prettiest so far. But I'm going to try some bicones. And I'm also going to use some accent beads. Um, I may change my mind on the shape of these. I may find something else, but right now this is what I have out. So I'm going to use some of these little metal beads. And these are Swarovski bicone crystals, and they're 6 millimeter. So I'll be using those. And then I'm going to use the brass artistic wire, and I am going to use the size 1 crimp tube for the first one, and I will also show you, probably in the same bracelet, how to use the size 2 crimp beads that are tubes also. 
So let's go ahead and get started okay, with this so the project. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut an 11 inch piece of wire. Now, after you've cut it, you're going to very gently with some nylon nose pliers. You don't necessarily have to, um, but just kind of very gently run around it and make it kind of circular and straighten it out and harden the wire just a little bit like that with your nail on nose pliers. That is pretty helpful. You don't necessarily have to and sometimes it'll come off of your spool pretty round like this. But this is the shape you want. And then you're just going to kind of crisscross the two ends and um, make a teardrop shape just so we can get kind of a center to our um, piece of wire here. Now, we're going to start by putting on a few beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a crimp bead. So this is a size one round crimp bead. And then I'm going to pick up a bicone crystal. And then actually I think I'll start with a metal bead. and then a bicone crystal and then a metal bead I'm just going to put some beads down here in the middle I think I'll do five metal beads and four crystals just like this and then I want to find my center the best I possibly can. You're going to be off a little bit. It's just the nature of the thing here. Find it as well as you can. And then you're going to pick up your straight nose pliers. This is a size one crimp bead, a round one. So all I have to do is hold it as steady as I can and just crimp that as hard as you can. Just squish it and make sure it's nice and steady. You can do it one more time, but you want to make sure that you don't go sideways on it because then you're going to open it back up. Just straight down on it. Like that. Now, I'm going to get closer for the next one because I realized it was far away, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. Now I'm going to pick up another one. And on this side, I am going to grab a hold of the crimp bead and because there's a stop on the other side I can kind of push on this crimp bead and then push it up against the beads and then squeeze as hard as I can and make sure it's really tight and that it doesn't move and this is what I have. Now I'm going to show you how to use the um, crimping tool with a crimp tube. This is a size two. Now make sure you're using beetle-on crimps. I don't care if it's the tube, the round, whatever. They need to be beetle-on. Those cheap little thin flimsy things will not work. Beetle-on are the only ones that I have found that are strong enough. So, um, and they don't crush. They work really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this crimp bead, oh let's see, right about here. I think so that I'm going to space them out a little further you could put it closer together you can put it wherever you want but I think I'm going to put mine right about here then I'm going to grab my crimping tool on the crimping tool you have two openings one, I'm going to squeeze these shut so you can see it this one towards the back of the pliers so towards the handle and then this one towards the front of the handle. This one towards the back has a little crinkle side and then a half moon side. You want to use this one first. You want to center your bead on the crinkles. So we're going to hold our bead. This is a little bit of a chore actually. Get your bead where you want it. On the other side we'll mark it so that we can get it correct. We're going to guess this side because it doesn't really matter on the first side, but it does on the second side if you want it to be symmetrical. So right here I'm going to squeeze this as tight as I can. It's in the second divot on my pliers and I'm just squeezing the heck out of it. 
Now, I'm going to turn it over so you can see, and I'm going to get you closer. This isn't moving, which is what we want, and you can see that there's basically a fold in the middle of the crimp bead. That's when you're going to use this part of your pliers, and you're going to go sideways, and you're going to squeeze these two sides over that fold. So we're just squeezing it together, just like this. Oops, center it well. You don't usually have more than one shot. I didn't actually get it squeezed. So on this, you have to be really careful. Get it centered and squeeze those two sides straight down together. If you don't get it right, it will not crimp on this wire. So you need to make sure you get it right. And if you don't, it'll slide around, slide it off and try it again. It's not a big deal. Now, I have this one where I want it, so what I'm going to do is get a ruler. I'm going to measure just how big that is. So it's from the end of the crimp tube to the end of the crimp tube, it's about three quarters of an inch. So on this side, I'm going to set this on the end of the crimp tube, and then I'm going to get a Sharpie, and I'm just going to mark three quarters of an inch. Okay, right, <laughs> right, right where, right there, <laughs> okay, my eyes are deceiving me, was it three quarters of an inch, no, it was actually, yeah, a little bit more than three quarters, so, okay, so right, there. And of course my marker doesn't want to work. The lid's been off of it for a while so I was being a slacker and didn't put my lid back on. There we go. So now I've got my mark. Let me make sure. <laughs> I don't think I got it. Yeah, close enough. Okay, so I'm going to grab another crimp tube. And I'm actually going to kind of wipe that mark off because I'm going to go a little bit. I'm going to go right in front of it because my measurement was slightly off. And then I am going to... Squeeze my crimp tube. As tight as I can. And then make sure it doesn't move. Turn it over. Put it into the first divot sideways. And squeeze again. As tight as I can. And that's a good crimp. Now, these look pretty good. I'll have to wipe off that measurement. I have, I think I have it a little bit short on this side, but that's okay. For now, it's fine. And then I'm going to put on some more beads. So I think I'm just going to do um, three of these metal beads. and two crystals. And then a crimp tube. So, I need to get some more crimp tubes out. I have a bunch of size ones. The size ones, the rounds are much easier to use. So, if you're worried about using a crimping tool or you don't have one, get a size 1 crimp bead. But make sure it's beetle on. Again, I'm going to crimp this bead. And that's a nice tight crimp. Now, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I will pick up my beads. 
and put them on. Like that, grab a crimp tube. And again, crimp it. I can grab a hold of it, push against my beads a little so it's tight, squeeze as tightly as I can, turn it over, and squeeze it again. Just like that. Now, you can either arrange it to where your, um, crimp tube is towards the back or the front or your little uh, crease in the crimp tube. It's just by the way you hold your um, crimping tool. doesn't really matter though because this is going to show on either side anyway so it doesn't really matter. And now this is what I have. Now I am going to get my ruler and I'm going to measure two inches it's a little more than that because of the curve, but right around as close as I can get to two inches. And then I'm going to get my straight nose pliers, or my flat nose pliers actually, they work best. And I'm going to place it right in that area and I am going to bend this wire in like this. And then I'm going to use my bailing pliers, but you can use anything round that you would like. Round nose pliers are fine too, except for they don't make quite a big enough circle for it. I mean, you, you don't have to have quite as big of a circle as I'm making. They can be smaller. On this one, I did make a smaller one, so you could conceivably use your round nose pliers. That's fine, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this shape right here. So what I need to do is bring it like this. So if you're going to use your, so I can roll it over the top of that, if you're going to use your round nose pliers, then do this, put it right in the corner, and then bring your wire up around. Just like I'm going to do with my bailing pliers. If you're using something like a Sharpie or something, which is a little bit too fat, but you could put it on here and then roll it around it. That's fine. So I'm going to use these. and then I'm just going to roll my wire over it and then I'm going to kind of move my pliers and continue to roll my wire so that it makes a nice circle like this. And then I am going to take this circle and I am going to turn it. So now it is up and down like this. If I hold my bracelet against my bead mat, it's up and down. It's not flush against the bead mat. Now I am going to grab a hold of the circle here and I am going to bring this extra wire around and I'm going to start coiling it. Now you can use your pliers if you'd like. You can use your fingers. Some of these wires, if you're using the um, half hard, well half hard is too hard. If you're using the German style wire it might be a little easier to use a pair of pliers to do that. But it doesn't matter, just coil it around like that. And then take your wire cutters and cut that as close as you can. And then tuck that tail in, trying not to distort your wire, which is really easy to do with this little 20 gauge wire. So chain nose probably worked better than flat nose, but uh, it worked. So that's all that matters. Now I can just straighten this up. And this is what I have. And now I'm going to go to this side. I'm going to measure two inches and then about an inch and three quarters right here. So 
I'm going to go about There's my two inch mark. I'm going to go just a little bit above that two inch mark and I'm going to grab my flat in my flat nose pliers because you don't want quite two inches but real close and I'm going to bend this straight over my flat nose pliers straight over like this. And straighten it out a little bit and then I'm going to take this and turn it. So now like I said, it's up and down. Straighten this out and squeeze it together a little bit more. It doesn't have to be really tight, just nice and neat. Well, maybe a little tighter than that. And then you're going to measure about a half an inch. Uh. See if I can get coordinated here. About a half an inch, right about there. I am going to then take this um, wire on the inside here. Let me back off just a little bit and bend it over the other wire. And I'll move my fingers so you can see what I have. This is what I have. Now, um, I want these to be a little closer together. Don't distort your wire doing this, but having it a little closer together is a little nicer. Now I'm going to take my flat nose pliers, or my chain nose pliers, either one, doesn't matter, and hold it like this. This wire should be parallel to the pliers, and then you're going to begin to coil it. Now I'm actually going to grab my round nose pliers or flat nose, it doesn't matter, and I'm going to kind of pull this tight, because I want this to be really a tight coil. So I'm just going to coil this like this. Make sure you're holding your um, bent part up here nice and tight and steady because you don't want to distort it. And you don't really want to distort this wire here either so don't be too crazy with it. Just keep turning until you get about four turns. About the same as your other side. I am not the best wire worker in the world, people, so I apologize, but I do what I can. And then I'm just going to cut this off and tuck it in. Now I'm going to straighten this out. Squeeze this in a little bit. Oh no, see? get too picky about it and you just mess it up so don't do that so the next step then is to pick up your round nose pliers go you know towards the end pretty close to the end of the pliers about a little more than halfway down and leave a little edge of your wire here and then just roll and then take the very tip of your pliers on the very tip of the bend wire the bent wire and just roll it up just a little bit now you can arrange that and squeeze it in and do all kinds of stuff to it now we need to shape our bracelet a little bit so you can just put it together and kind of stretch it out my measurement was off a little bit you can also take like an uh a mandrel, put it around it, and just kind of go like this. Anything round. It doesn't have to be a mandrel. Anything round and see how that straightened that out for me really nice. Just put it around something. And my main issue is that my measurement was off, so this side is longer. You can also use your nail on those pliers and just kind of straighten it out a little bit. But, like I said, my issue is my measurement, which is fine. I'm not going to worry about it too much because it's not that horrible. Now, we're going to put this on. When you put it on, 
You just have to squeeze it together like that. And that's what that looks like on. You can also oval it a little bit on your wrist. You can adjust it however you need to. And it turns out really, really cute. So that's what that looks like. Let me stick a couple more on. And back off a little. And I'll show you what they look like. Because you can stack these together really nice. And have just a bunch of bangles on your wrist. That would... That's always a good, it's always good as far as I'm concerned. And let me get coordinated here. There's that one. Now, the thing is, is the bigger beads you use, the more likely it is to be that your measurement's off a little bit. So, um, they're all just slightly different. Most of them are pretty close to the same size that I made, but they're a little bit different because of the size of beads I made, I put on here. So, you may want to take that into consideration. If you're going to use something like 8 millimeter, um, you may want to give yourself another inch of wire to work with. If your wrist is bigger, then go ahead and give yourself more wire to work with. You can make sure that no matter what you do, like if you want an eight inch bracelet, then add four inches to it and cut that length of wire. If you want a nine inch bracelet, then add, because some people like a, a lot of movement. I don't mind, I want a little movement, but I, I don't like it to be falling into my palm. So this for me is perfect. And my wrist is six and a half inches, a little, uh, maybe a little bit over six and a half inches, not much. And these work really well for me. So anyway, that is how you make these bracelets. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Bye-bye.